Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Evan Schneider. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about how to color grade C-log footage. Now I'm going to show you multiple ways of how to color grade your C-log, C-log 2, and C-log 3 footage in both Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll feel confident in choosing a workflow that's right for you, whether it's using my LUTs, whether it's using the Canon LUTs, or the built-in color management in Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. So as an overview, when you're working with log footage, there's kind of a three step process involved. The first step is converting the log footage to Rec. 709, which is your display profile. You want to make sure to do this step first so that you're viewing it properly. But then the next step, which kind of comes before that, is doing your basic adjustments like white balance, exposure, contrast, saturation, all of that. Now, these adjustments happen before the conversion LUT in the image processing pipeline, but you want to make sure that you're doing these adjustments while viewing them through the conversion LUT. Then the third step is basically after the conversion LUT where you're making final adjustments and you're applying creative looks or making small adjustments to fine tune the image to your liking. Now, this process is universal. It's just the basic tools in each program that are different. Working with log footage can definitely be intimidating at first because of all of the different extra steps and technical processes that you have to take to make it look correct again. But I can tell you, once you learn these steps and you go through this process, the benefit of shooting log definitely outweighs the few extra steps that you have to take to convert it. It's really important when you're color grading C-log footage to make sure that you're using either a LUT or a color space transform or color management. This is because not only does the gamma of the recording have to be transformed into your display gamma, but also most importantly, your color space has to be transformed from your camera color space to your display color space. This is an important transformation and it requires a complicated matrix transform that remaps the colors from one to another. But before we get into the weeds too much, let me just show you in both Premiere and DaVinci Resolve how I color grade C-Log footage using my LUTs. So we're here in Premiere Pro and I have a bunch of clips set up. I've got this first section of C-Log 2 clips and then the second section is C-Log 3 clips. Now, both of these were shot in the color space of Canon Cinema Gamut and I recommend shooting always in Canon Cinema Gamut it because one, it's the only color space that is supported by color management in Premiere Pro and Resolve. You might as well shoot in the bigger color space to give you more flexibility in post. And before we apply any of the LUTs, we need to make sure our color management settings are properly set up in Premiere. So in Lumetri Color, I'm going to go to my settings and I want to make sure that I uncheck auto detect log video color space. We wanna make sure that it's not automatically converting it. And for the sequence, we wanna make sure that the auto tone map media checkbox is off. And so now that we have that all set up, I'm gonna go back to edit and I'm going to go down to my creative look. I've already installed the LUTs into the Premiere folder and I'm going to go to the LUTs that match what I shot. So this was shot in C-Log2 Canon Cinema Gamut, and we're converting it to Rec. 709, and this is just the basic conversion LUT. We're gonna click that, and you can see that automatically the footage has been transformed to our display color space, and it looks like it properly should. Now, whenever you're grading log footage, you wanna make sure that your basic adjustments are happening before your conversion LUT is applied. So once we have this applied, now we can go into the basic corrections and I can adjust things like exposure. You can see that as I adjust it, it looks nice and proper. And we can increase the temperature, maybe bring back some highlight detail, make it a little bit darker. And so you can see these are my basic adjustments. This is before and this is after. And then this is my creative look. This is just the base conversion LUT. That's before and that's after. In two really easy steps, we've converted the C-Log2 Canon Cinema Gamut footage to Rec. 709 and applied some basic corrections. Let's go to another clip. This is also C-Log2. So we can go to our look. We can try base. Maybe let's try base cool um, to make this footage a little bit cooler. We can also try out some other ones. We can do base, normal, and you can see that this clip is a little bit dark. Maybe it was a little bit underexposed in camera. And so that's an easy fix. We can simply go into our basic correction 
And in this case, I'm going to try applying one of the preluts that comes in the pack. So I have some preluts which basically mimic in-camera changes. So I'm gonna to go to C log two and maybe we wanna bump the exposure up plus two stops. So I'm gonna click exposure plus two and boom, now the exposure is looking a lot better. We can still make further adjustments right here. Maybe bring down the contrast, maybe bring the exposure up a little more. Maybe we wanna to add to that moody tone, bring the color temperature down and add a little bit of richness with saturation. So in those few steps, We've gone from the log image to Rec. 709. We've also done a basic correction, bringing up the exposure, bringing down the color temperature, and all of our settings and footage looks great. If your entire sequence contains all of the same type of footage, like say your entire sequence is in C log two or C log three, what you can do is actually go and make an adjustment layer. And I can just put the adjustment layer over top of the entire sequence. And then on the adjustment layer, I can apply my creative look. So let's see, let's try one of the creative looks, maybe um, Chrome, C log two, Canon Cinema Gamut to Chrome. We apply that. And so now all of these clips that were shot in C log two are converted to Rec. 709 in one step. The next step that I can take is I can go through each of these clips on the bottom and I can do the same basic adjustments. And this is also according to the proper workflow where we have the basic adjustments happening before the conversion LUT. So I can go to this clip, maybe we wanna bring down the exposure a little bit, go to the next clip, this one needs to be brightened and maybe bring back some of that shadow detail. There we go, that looks good. This clip is looking good, maybe a little bit bright, so we can bring down the exposure, bring down the contrast a little bit. And if you see that you're adjusting contrast a lot, we can always go back up to our creative look, and I can go to the C log two base, maybe minus one or minus two contrast. Let's do minus two. And so that's just applying a little less contrast. Then we can go back, see how it looks on our clips. Maybe bring the contrast back up. And so you can see this is a really fast and intuitive workflow for converting your C-Log2 footage and then also, you know, making it look nice and not having to worry about doing the same thing on every clip. It's a very fast workflow. And say we do all of this balancing and we want to maybe apply one of the creative looks, I can just go back up to my adjustment layer, go to my look drop down, go to one of the C-Log3 creative looks, maybe, Every day is one of my favorites. And it easily applies a creative look in one step. And then we can go back through, make sure that everything looks good and it's looking great. And so now we have a creative look applied. So it makes it really easy to audition different clips and change them, make them look really good. And it maintains a lot of flexibility. It's a pretty similar workflow in DaVinci Resolve. Let me go into my project settings to show you how to set it up. So it's also in Resolve, we're using a manual workflow. So I'm gonna to go to my color management, make sure your color science is set up as DaVinci YRGB. And then our timeline color space is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, and our output color space is same as timeline. If you are grading on the monitor, you can also use the Rec. 709A Mac um, Gamma, and that'll make sure that your viewer matches your export. Um, but it works in any Gamma, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 is what I default to. And so now we're just going to create a simple two node structure on our clips. Our first node is going to be for basic adjustments. So I'll call this um, primaries. And then this node is going to be called LUT. And we're going to apply our LUT on the second node. And right here I have my C log two LUTs already loaded. We're going to go back to the conversion and I'm just going to apply the base LUT right here. And there we go, we have the footage converted already. And then here in my primaries, I can use either the offset wheel or I can go into my HDR wheels, which will be a little bit more accurate. I'm gonna set the color space to Canon Cinema Gamut. I'm gonna change the gamma to Canon Log 2. And now any adjustments here I make will mimic the in-camera settings. 
So I can just bring down the exposure. Maybe I want to warm it up a little bit. Maybe decrease the contrast a little bit. There we go. So now in two easy steps, we've done our primary adjustment and we have our LUT doing the conversion. Now, if I want to take this and apply it to other clips in the sequence that are also C log two, I can go to, I can hit option one to save it as a memory. And then I'm gonna hit the down arrow to go to the next clip and I can hit command one to paste it. And since we already have our HDR wheels set up, I can bring up the exposure here, play that through, make sure it looks good. I can go to the next clip, command one, boom, bring the exposure down, maybe bring the highlights down a little bit. There we go. That's looking nice. Again. So you can see that it's a very intuitive process and in a few easy steps, we've applied a look We've created a color grade. You can also do the adjustment layer workflow in DaVinci Resolve as well. If I wanna try out another look, I can always go to my LUT node and I can just go back to maybe the creative looks and let's try Creative Sensei. I really like this one. Now it might take a little bit more adjusting from here. Maybe I can cool it down a little bit and decrease the saturation a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And that's how easy it is to use the LUTs in DaVinci Resolve as well. My LUT pack actually includes eight conversion LUTs with varying contrast levels, white balance, different adjustments like that. It also includes 25 creative looks that are built into the conversion LUT. So these are different kind of film emulations and creative looks and different styles that I've developed over the years as a professional colorist. And then it also gives you eight pre-LUTs, which are basically LUTs that you apply before the conversion LUT that mimic in-camera settings. So these are things like exposure adjustments, plus one, plus two, minus one, minus two stops. Also a warm version, a cool version, a version that gives you a bit wider dynamic range. So in total, there's 41 LUTs for each camera profile. They work with Canon Log, Canon Log 3, in Canon Cinema Gamut and BT709, and then also Canon Log 2 and Canon Cinema Gamut. And there's two separate LUT packs. So there's one for Canon Log 2, and then there's one for Canon Log and Canon Log 3. My goal with these LUTs was to give you a natural starting point on which to start your color grade and to give you kind of a Swiss Army knife or a tool set to use for your Canon log footage that'll give you more flexibility and save you time in the color grading process, all while making it extremely easy to color grade your footage make it look nice. So there's basically two ways to color grade your Canon log footage for free if you don't want to purchase LUTs. The first way is you can download the official Canon LUTs from their website to convert C-Log, C-Log 2, or C-Log 3 footage to Rec. 709. You can find those on the Canon website if you go to the camera you're using and go to the support downloads. Um, you can download the specific LUTs for your camera for the profile that you're shooting. The other way you can do it is to use the built-in color management in Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, and I'll show you both of those methods now. So if you're using the official Canon LUTs, it's the same workflow as what I just showed you with my LUTs. Basically, you would apply them in the creative look drop-down menu. Right here, I have a folder of all of the different LUTs that I've downloaded from the Canon website. So I'm going to find, I shot in Cinema Gamut, Canon Log 2, and I wanna convert it to Rec. 709. So Cinema Gamut, oh, Canon Log 2, to BT 709 wide DR. And I'm going to hit open and that's going to apply the official Canon LUT to my footage. And I can further go and adjust exposure, white balance, all of that same stuff with the same workflow that I showed you before. Now, the Canon LUT, I would say, errs on the side of being more scientific than more creative. It's basically converting the primaries of Canon Cinema Gamut and the Gamma Canon Log 2 to Rec. 709 in a way that it is calibrated to hit the specific color targets. But I would say that 
that being more scientific, it lacks kind of the creative feel and the more natural look and the things that are more pleasing to our eyes. So if you're using the Canon LUTs, you may have to do more work on the back end to adjust things like exposure, white balance, specific colors. Um, you might have to go into the curves and make specific hue adjustments. You might be able to end up in the same spot, but it'll just take more time. I can go ahead and apply this look to the other clips. Um, I can hit copy and then select all of these, hit paste attributes and Lumetri color. And there we go. Now we have Lumetri applied to all these other clips. What you're missing out on with the Canon official LUTs is the different conversions of minus contrast, wide DR, warm, cool, and then the creative looks that are built in to the conversion LUT. I can go to these clips and we can apply the Canon C-Log3 LUT to these. So I'm gonna go back to browse, Canon Log3, Canon Cinema Gamut to BT709, wide DR, and there we go. And I can bring up my exposure and there we go. It's a nice conversion. It's free. It's easy. That's how you do it with the Canon official LUTs. You do the same process in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to go ahead and reset this clip. Here I have the C-Log LUTs from Canon loaded in. We're going to do C-Log 2 to BT709. There we go. Now we have the official Canon LUT applied. I can create a new node before and this is where I can do my adjustments. Maybe we wanna use the offset wheel for this one. I can do all of the same stuff, same workflow, um, super easy and free from Canon's website. If you wanted to apply some sort of creative look to this footage, you would do that after the conversion LUT. So you could do you know, curves adjustments, you could apply a creative look, um, different stuff like that. I like to create my creative looks in the display referred color space um, after the conversion LUT because I feel like the tools respond easier that way. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. All right, so we're back in Premiere Pro again, and now I'm going to show you how to use color management in both Premiere and Resolve. So before we do this, we need to go and redo our project settings in Premiere. We're going to use Premiere's built-in color management. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click auto detect log video color space. That's going to look at the metadata in the clips. The next thing we want to do is go to our sequence settings, make sure our working color space is set to rec 709. And then we're going to click auto tone map media. It's going to give us a warning that this will change our settings and the appearance will look different. We're going to hit okay. And you'll see that nothing has happened yet on some of these clips, but then other clips, we can see that it has converted it to Rec. 709. That's because these clips right here are clips that I shot with the Canon R5 and I'm using the original camera files that have the metadata built in. And then these clips are clips that I downloaded as stock footage from ArtGrid. And so since they've been converted, they've lost the color space and gamma metadata so this is no problem. It just means that we have to manually tag these clips and tell Premiere what color space and gamma the input is. So I'm going to right click these, go into my project, and I'm gonna right click and then go to modify, interpret footage. Then I'm going to go to color and I'm going to override the media color space and I'm gonna tell it that it's Canon Log 2 and Canon Cinema Gamut. Once I click that, you can see that it's automatically tone mapped the media to Rec. 709. Now, when you do this, you can actually select multiple clips. So I can do these two clips. I can go to modify color, and then I can override media color space, set it to Canon Log 2. And then you can see that these clips have been converted as well. Now we're trusting that Premiere's image processing pipeline is correct. And we can go to exposure. We can adjust exposure up and down, but you can see that these sliders have a little bit of a different feel. Um, and you can see in our scopes, when we hit the exposure, it's really quickly um, clipping in the highlights and the shadows. And so it's just something that you'll have to get used to. And it's kind of a preference thing of if you like working with LUTs under the LUT to do the basic adjustments, 
or just relying on Premiere's um, internal color management. But this is a great way to easily convert a lot of footage really quickly. You can also see that um, our camera original clips have been converted automatically and I can adjust things like exposure really easily. It all looks great. And if you're working with footage that it automatically tags, it's a great way to quickly color grade footage and convert it from log to rec 709 and still enjoy the benefits of shooting in log. You just have to be careful about things like right here, our highlights are clipping. So we need to be careful about that. And it might take a little bit of extra work to get it looking nice. Okay, so now we're gonna do our color management in DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the grades on all of these clips. So now we're gonna go back into our settings in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna change our color science to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. And I'm going to do automatic color management for SDR. You can also uncheck this, change it to SDR Rec 709. And then our output color space, we're gonna do Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Um, color manage mode basically means that it's going to color manage our clips and do everything under the hood so that we don't have to perform any color space transforms. Now it's the same thing with these clips. These clips need to be manually tagged and I'm going to select all of the clips that are shot in C log two and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on input color space and then I'm going to set it to Canon and then Canon cinema gamut Canon log two. We're gonna click that and you can see that it's automatically converted our footage to Rec. 709. Now I can go to my C-Log3 clips and you can see that DaVinci Resolve has also converted these camera clips automatically. And we can already go and you know make our different adjustments. I would recommend using the HDR wheels because they're color space aware and we can do everything that we've done before. We just need to tag this one, input color space, Canon, and then Canon Cinema Gamut C-Log3. And there we go, now we have this one all converted. Now we can easily go through our clips again and we can do our color grade and you can see that we don't have anything happening here on our node tree. And so it kind of cleans it up, does everything under the hood and then we can make our adjustments right here. We can do things like exposure, contrast, all of that stuff. But you'll see that we're kind of limited with our options again in terms of creative look and kind of workflow. We're kind of stuck in the DaVinci YRGB color managed workflow. When we're using automatic color management in DaVinci Resolve, we can also take advantage of using the HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate color processing mode. So if we uncheck automatic color management, we can go to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and then we can output again to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And this makes sure that we are working in the largest color space possible. And then at the output, we're converting it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is our display color space. And so anything we do in the nodes here in that wide color space makes it a little bit easier to be able to manipulate all the different colors. The only thing you have to consider is that if you are using creative LUTs that were built for Rec. 709, which they commonly are, they're not going to look right when you're using them in HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. So you'll want to make sure that your LUTs are working properly and it may result in a more manual workflow, even though it is converting the footage automatically. So hopefully it's helpful to kind of compare and contrast these different workflows. I'm kind of biased in saying that I really prefer my LUTs to use, and there's a few reasons why I prefer that workflow over a color managed workflow or using Canon's official LUTs. The first benefit is that it gives you more options in terms of a starting point for your color grade. So the Canon LUT gives you one look right off the bat. The color management gives you one look right off the bat. But my LUTs have multiple different conversion LUTs that you can use to start off with, including the natural look and then the minus contrast looks, the warm, cool, wide DR. It gives you a lot of options based on the footage and your preferences to start with. 
The other thing is that it has the creative looks built in. This gives you an even better starting point if you want a creative look. It gives you a one-step way to convert your footage and then apply the creative look at the same time. The other thing is that you can use these LUTs in camera as a monitoring LUT. They are calibrated to preserve middle gray and to set it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And so you can judge accurately your exposure, your white balance, all of that stuff in camera. If you're using an external monitor with your Canon camera, it's better to view using a LUT or a viewing assist instead of viewing the log image because you're more prone to make exposure and white balance mistakes if you're only viewing log. So I highly recommend using these LUTs in camera. Obviously you can use the Canon LUTs, but these LUTs are also just as accurate and they give you more options in camera as well. The other benefit is, like I said before, the starting point. So my LUTs versus the Canon LUTs, the Canon LUTs are a lot more scientific. My LUTs are a lot more natural and they give you kind of a more um, human starting point instead of a scientific starting point. And like I said, you can also use the creative LUTs as a starting point that have film emulations and different looks, different styles um, to kind of get you going and figure out what you want your footage to look like. Compared to color management, Premiere Pro, I would not say that Premiere Pro's color management is very robust or very good. Like I said, when I was making the exposure adjustments while I was using color management, those adjustments are seem to be happening after the footage is transformed. And so you don't have the same safety net and the same kind of highlight roll off and shadow roll off that you do when you're using my LUTs. And you're kind of forced into a certain look on the footage and you're losing flexibility. Now it may do the conversion automatically, but if you're already manually tagging clips, in my opinion, you might as well use a more flexible workflow using LUTs, even adjustment layers, stuff like that. And I think you're going to get better results. DaVinci Resolve color management is very robust, very respected, but like I said, it pushes you into a specific workflow and it can be difficult and less user-friendly. Um, using DaVinci wide gamut intermediate is really nice, but you're forcing yourself into a different working color space that a lot of your LUTs might not work in, and it's a more manual process from there. So if you're looking for a really simple way to do things, it's a lot easier to use my LUTs than a color managed mode. A common question is if you want to adjust the intensity of one of the LUTs or the creative looks, how do you adjust the intensity? So I do not recommend adjusting the intensity of the actual LUT because the LUT is converting from a color space to another color space. And if you adjust the intensity, you're going to get less accurate results. But say I apply the Sensei LUT to this and I'm feeling like it's a little overpowering, the easiest way to adjust the intensity is to just make an adjustment before the conversion LUT. So I'm gonna hit Shift S, make a new node. And on this node, I can go to my contrast and I can just bring down the contrast. And that's going to bring down basically the intensity of the curve that the LUT is applying. It's the same thing, I can bring down the saturation. Maybe the LUT is overpowering the footage a little too much. So I can kind of offset it and balance by bringing down the contrast and saturation before the conversion LUT is applied. So this is before and this is after. If I wanna make further adjustments to what the LUT is doing, I can go after the conversion and I can kind of you know adjust the footage from there. And then I can go back to my LUT. I can try out some different looks. Um, let's try Cine, Chrome. You know, you can kind of go through and figure out which creative look you like the most. Um, I really like Lectar. And then we can bring down, make some adjustments. And so that's kind of how you can offset and balance without adjusting the intensity of the actual LUT. Same thing in Premiere Pro. Say I apply C-Log2 and I'm doing every day. Say I don't want that much contrast in the shadows. I can always go to my contrast slider and just decrease the contrast before the LUT. I can also bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, bring down the exposure 
and you can see that all of these adjustments are very organic feeling and I've kind of offset the contrast that the LUT is giving by using the basic correction adjustments. So that's before and that's after. So you want to make sure that your LUT is always at 100% and then go ahead and do basic adjustments before to shift the look and offset it if it's giving too much of a look. This shot here was shot in C-Log3 Canon Cinema Gamut. So I'm just going to go to my creative look. I'm gonna go down to LC C-Log3 Canon Cinema Gamut. And I'm just gonna go through and try out some different creative looks. One of my favorites is Chrome, which gives a really nice feel. And then I can adjust things like saturation, white balance, exposure, maybe bring the exposure up a little bit. So that one's looking pretty nice. And then you can actually even go through these arrows and you can go, you gotta get to, this one is pretty cool. If you like it, you can just click it. That's a more serious tone, a cold tone. Um, I also really love, Lectar is really nice, kind of a warm look. Um, there's also just a simple one called Highlight Boost which basically just boosts the highlights and makes a little more contrast compared to the base LUT. Very nice is just a little bit brighter. So you can see how much flexibility it gives you um, in terms of your creative look. Um, this one is really nice. We can bring up the exposure, maybe reset the saturation. There we go. So yeah, it gives you a ton of flexibility in terms of looks and different styles that you want to play with. We can also just go back to the C-Log3 regular look and that's looking good. And then we could apply our own creative look from there. We could apply an adjustment layer on top, put another creative LUT. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and options in terms of how you want to color grade the footage. If you want to learn more and purchase my C-Log LUTs, there's links down in the description. There's one LUT pack for C-Log 2 Canon Cinema Gamut, and then there's another LUT pack for C-Log and C-Log 3 in both Canon Cinema Gamut and BT709 color spaces, depending on how you shoot with. So the links to all of those is down in the description. If you're wondering which log profile to shoot with on your Canon camera, the first thing I would recommend is checking out what the options are on your camera. I think the pinnacle, the best Canon log profile is definitely C-Log2 Canon Cinema Gamut. That'll give you the most professional look, the most flexibility in post, and that's kind of what they put on their flagship cameras. The next profile I would recommend is C-Log3 Canon Cinema Gamut. If you're shooting on one of the older cameras and it has Canon Log and only BT709, that profile is still supported in the Canon Log and Canon Log3 LUT pack, um, which has LUTs for Canon Log BT709 to Rec709. Whether you're shooting on one of the newest Canon cameras or one of the oldest, your camera is supported by one of these LUTs in the LUT pack. My goal with creating this LUT pack was to create a really easy tool set to use that blends the technical accuracy and color science aspect with a natural human touch. So these LUTs will give you a natural starting point that doesn't look too scientific, and especially with Canon that has overpowering reds, you'll be pleased to see that these LUTs take care of that and they kind of dial it in and give you a better, more natural looking starting point than what you would get with the Canon official LUTs. So I hope this video was helpful. Definitely leave any questions in the comments below. I'll try to respond to every question that you have. If you're also curious about applying creative looks, I also have creative LUT packs that are compatible with the conversion LUTs in the Canon Log LUT pack. I also have a Super 8 emulation preset called Fake 8 Film Lab for DaVinci Resolve. So definitely check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.